Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We're going straight now into Off the Press. What are the major stories making headlines across the country this morning? And we kickstart with the punch newspapers. The AstraZeneca vaccine is, you know, top of the, you know, the stories that you can find there. It says, vaccinations offer setback. Five more countries halt exercise. Spain, Germany, France, Italy, and Holland pause rollout. Uh, PTF admits global opposition to vaccine mountain. Over 8,000 vac uh, Nigerians vaccinated, says the NPHCDA. Also this morning, countries complaining about Nigeria's multiple foreign exchange rates. And that's from the Konjo Wella. Be vigilant. We can't secure all schools, federal government tells parents and others. And this one, unemployment rate hits 33.3%. 23.18 million Nigerians jobless, says the NBS. And that's um, uh, still on the punch newspapers this morning. Nigeria's public debt rose to 32.9 trillion naira in December, says the Debt Management Office. And suspected headsmen tie or your farmer to a tree and kill him with a cutlass. Khan tackles federal government in court over Kama, assembles 30 lawyers. And we also can see Pandef Masob disagree over Sari Dokobo's Biafra government declaration. Uh, finally, Ondo's support livestock plan won't give land to headsmen, Akira de Louis saying. Mm. Let's turn to the Nigerian Tribune. The headline reads 23.18 million unemployed in the last six months. That's according to the Bureau of Statistics. Vatican bears grey. Gay Union, Bar's Gay Union, blessings, uh, says God can't bless sin. Let me take that again. Vatican, Bar's Gay Union, blessing, says God can't bless sin. Wakili, police call for evidence. Can takes FG to court over Kama. The WTO DG is telling uh, Nigerians how they can rip from the WTO says free trade won't harm Nigeria's economic diversification. Buhari, Jonathan, Atiku, others congratulate Burner Boy Whiskey on Grammy Awards. Now the world is dancing to Africa's rhythm. Troops kill 41 terrorists, rescue 60 captives. Bandits storm primary school in Kaduna, abduct three teachers. Two OOU students abducted in Ogun State. Seven die in fuel tanker smashes uh, a tricycle in Akwai bomb. Kidnappers shutting down Nigeria's educational system, NUT warns. Post armed 24 hours guards to schools, Atiku advises FG. PTF is saying safety not compromised in the use of AstraZeneca vaccines. Herdsmen killings. Nigerians in diaspora threaten to halt $25 billion annual remittance. Petition Buhari, NGF, others. I queried legal identity of petitioners, says Wase. And we see a very gory picture on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune. Uh, some containers which fell off a trailer, crushed three vehicles and one tricycle at Barracks bus stop in Watch Trade Fair on the Lagos Badagri Expressway in Lagos on Monday. But thankfully, uh, the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency said no life was lost. All right, and now to the Nation newspapers. How Amoteko can secure Southwest, and that is from Afenifer. Uh, Oshun family of six killed inside mosque, victims buried in Kwara. And also, uh, CBN directs banks to begin scan-to-pay system. 322 million naira fraud. Senator knows fate April 19th. Also on the Nation this morning, how Nigeria can avert economic collapse, and that's from Okonje Wela. Once again, the unemployment rose to 33.3% in the fourth quarter. We can also find on the nation, can sues federal government over Kama. And 59 killed in military crackdown on pro-democracy protesters in Myanmar. Outrage over detention of Nigerian. I saw that story yesterday. Really, really sad. I think her name is Itunu, um, who was arrested in um, Cote d'Ivoire, I believe, and you know, has been in jail for um, a crime she actually didn't ever commit. All right, I think we can squeeze in the daily independent before our guest comes in. Okay. Um, the story here says, trade facilitation at risk over ports shoddy clearing system. 
Okonjo Wales telling Nigeria what it must do to trade well in the global market. FG raises the alarm over third wave of COVID-19, orders Emirates to suspend flight operations, can drags FG to court over Kama. Niger community falls bandit attack, kills four, arrests two. Tony Lumelu Foundation disburses $130 million to 9,000 entrepreneurs. And uh, abductions declare state of emergency in education. Atiku tells Buhari. Uh, those are the stories we have here. There's uh, the Guardian left. All right. Um, let, let's quickly bring in uh, Chris Wandu so we can get uh, right into it. Uh, good morning once again, sir. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. All right. Let, let's start with, you know, the big one on the punch this morning, and that is fears concerning the AstraZeneca vaccine. Um, what's your reaction to that as all the countries have uh, started to shut down on its usage? Um, that is a tough one. What we are getting in um, is not um, uh, is not favorable at all. Uh, starting with the European, uh, most countries within the European Union, uh, about, I think about six or eight of them initially uh, that question the efficacy of the Astra uh, uh, vaccine and stop the use of it. Now we've seen other countries in Europe. Uh, Spain, Italy, uh, Germany, uh, and France also uh, halting uh, the use of the vaccine. Presently, we heard that 8 million uh, doses of the vaccine have been kept in the uh, uh, has not been used uh, sent to uh, those countries. Uh, but our agencies here have come out to tell us that is the problem. Uh, there is no adverse effect. They are not, they are not saying there is no effect. There is no serious adverse effect uh, on the vaccination. Uh, for me, I think we should also do more clinical trial on that particular vaccine. Uh, but that in itself doesn't stop us from pushing that and making sure that as many Nigerians as possible get the uh, uh, shots. Uh, the United States of America. Uh, the platinum ticket short and several other countries of the world. Let us even look at it from this perspective. If we're using the Astra, Astra Zeneca, uh, Zeneca vaccine in Nigeria, what alternative do we have in Europe and those other countries we're talking about? They have alternatives. That's like the Pfizer and other types, uh, which can bank on. But in Nigeria, this is the only one we have. So uh, I, I think we should still go ahead and continue making sure that. Uh, continue to push, uh, but if uh, um, the result from the various tests that's going on come to show that it's actually really, really affecting uh, lives of then we can start again. Otherwise, but for now, we have been given been upheld by the WHO also right. that uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine is good. Okay, and, and, and um, still on the punch this morning, the 33.3% uh, uh, unemployment rate, uh, staggering, and you know a lot of people aren't very happy about that. Uh, quickly also speak on that. We don't need the MBS to tell us that the, that astron astronomical uh, rise of unemployment is clearing us everywhere. <laughs> Both of you know that you have brothers, you have sisters, you have colleagues, you have friends across board. Uh, <laughs> majority of them are unemployed. There is no home in Nigeria that you don't have two or three, four, five people that are, that are fully um, that are graduates, uh, but they can't find a job. Um, so many Nigerians remain around the streets without a job. And, um, and we're still turning out uh, thousands and millions of graduates on a daily basis. Um, they, for me, the federal government has not been able to tackle the issue um, headlong. The provision of um, employment supposedly has been the cardinal point of the EPC government during its campaign in 2015. But instead of getting better, it's getting worse by the day. And the drilling for you in the economy has been matter at all. Um, which is why I believe that uh, uh, I think the curriculum within the universities, uh, we need to start thinking it a bit to make sure that we start thinking of making um, graduates employers of labor and looking at ways of being able to be able to 
um, see themselves as interviewers rather than uh, people that go around looking for white uh, for like jobs once they graduate from school. I think that should be a shift in our um, academic system where Niger young Nigerians should be taught the uh, issue of entrepreneurship on how to be able to start up businesses. I don't think they are doing much of that in, in, in universities these days at most higher institutions. And the Polytechnic initially was, uh, was established to handle that, but even at that, they are not doing as much as they can. So um, the unemployment rate, what we are just is just scratching something on a daily basis if the government gives 5,000 and uh, money to market women and the rest of them. That cannot cope unemployment. We should put up our thinking caps and make sure that the relevant agencies in charge are uh, able to create as much um, uh, jobs are possible. But we can how do we grow the, the, the economy if we have a very, very uh, terrible power system? Even the SMEs that are dying, not even those in, within the SME that are even self employed they cannot be able to do as much because they cannot even power um, uh, uh, that step. You see how we did, what is happening to the petrol, to petrol now? We are, we are uh, thinking about uh, the prices of uh, going up on a daily basis this is as much as 212 okay. now subsidy and the rest of them. No economy can grow under such circumstances. All right, Mr. Wando, let's uh, turn to a story we've seen on all uh, newspapers we looked at this morning, and it's about uh, the spate of abductions in the country. Uh, the former Vice President Atiku Obubaka is uh, calling on the presidency, calling on uh, President Muhammad Buhari to declare a state of emergency in education. Is this the way to go? It's not only in education, the state of emergency in every aspect of Nigerian life. We are talking of education. Oh, there are so many other aspects of our life that means immediate state of emergency. The, the, the cost of living is terrible. Um, insecurity is on the high. People cannot move around. Now the schools are becoming targets. Um, part of the well, in the papers it said that almost 600 schools have been shot in the, in the north. And um, it's even moving down to the south. Two students of um, um, all of Olam, all of are kidnapped uh, two days ago. Um, also, it happened in a little state few days ago. Uh, we are bandits, uh, the school. So, we are, the, our children are becoming endangered species. And that in itself is a very, very worrisome situation. Um, in the north, for instance, when trying to encourage um, uh, children to go back to school, with the level of high level of insecurity uh, within the schools, as many students as possible will not be able to go back to school. Um, the parents are not afraid to send their children to school. The girl child that has always been an indigenous species is even getting more injured because it seems to be that this uh, girl child seems to be more of a target these days within the north and even the uh, other children. So we, 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 I, I totally agree with uh, um, Atiku Abubaka. But not just in education, but in all aspects of our all right, and uh, you can also quickly share your thoughts on um, the government still talking about the same thing. Uh, the government saying uh, uh, parents should be uh, proactive uh, because they can't secure all schools. Um, you know, what, what does that, you know, say to you? Uh, we're not necessarily uh, trying to be, uh, I don't know how to put it, uh, but uh, to, to me, that is stupidity. I don't know what they mean by that. Do you mean that when my child is going to school, I should hire this man to follow him to school? Or are you saying that I should provide, I should follow, make sure that I follow my child to school and stand by the gate while he study? Are you saying that I, I should hire a private security people to look after my, uh, my, uh, my children while they are in school? What is the responsibility of government? The basic responsibility of every government is the protection of life and properties of its citizens. Any government that cannot be do that, then should I? And just give way for other for other capable people uh, to take over government. So it's nonsensical for anybody to start uh, that the parents should take more. I don't know what you mean by taking more active uh, participation in security. Parents don't provide security. It's the state that does that, and it's their responsibility. So securing securing of schools or any part of Nigeria is the responsibility of the state. So any government that cannot be able to is as good as. Uh, <laughs> not be in power, I should just give way. Um, it's high time we start telling this people the truth. Uh, if you, don't, you are not creative enough and know we're supposed to do 
they need power and for those who can handle we have a million and a thousand of people nigerians who can be able to handle the current situation we are, we are having either economically politically security otherwise but the problem that we are not the system is giving them the opportunity to do that so um the promises were made uh, in 2015 when the government was uh, campaigning and security was part of it so if they say that they cannot do that then for me i think it's hard time for them to do it at all mm. Thank you very much, Chris and Wanjiru. I think that's the much we can take at this time. We appreciate you coming on The Breakfast this morning. Thank you very much, Bob. You do have a nice day. Okay. All right. You too. Uh, stay with us here. It's uh, still Plus TV Africa's The Breakfast. And uh, after the short break, when we come back, we're talking today in history. I'm going back to the year 2012 to share with you events that took place on the 16th of March. Do we'll stay with us.